My name is Holly, and I'm one of the registered dietitians for El Rio. So welcome. Today, we are going to make a recipe. We're making a recipe called fruit tarts. So we hope that you get to learn a new recipe. We hope that you learn some cooking skills. That's always fun. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about fruits and vegetables and the different forms of fruits and vegetables. And then we always love an opportunity to have kids in the kitchen. So we hope that you get some ideas uh, about how to incorporate kids in the kitchen. Um, and then just a note that this is a Cooking Matters class. So Cooking Matters is an organization that does a lot of cooking classes and recipes for kids. And they have a website and they actually have their own YouTube channel where they have lots of videos for kids uh, on cooking and their recipes are always very kid friendly. Okay, so we are gonna get started with our fruit tarts. Uh, before we get started, the very first thing we want to do before we even touch our workstation, does anybody know what is our very first thing that we should do? We should wash our hands. Excellent. You're absolutely right. So my thing is over here. I'm going to go wash my hands. And does anybody know what I can do or what I can sing to make sure that I am washing my hands for the right amount of time? ABC. You can sing the ABCs. I love it. Yeah. Or you can sing happy birthday twice. All right, so I'm gonna go to the sink. Everybody can go to their sink and we're gonna wash our hands together. So now we're ready. We've got clean hands. All right, so let's go through what I've got out here. So first important thing, I've got my recipe. Without my recipe, I won't really know what to do. Recipes are really handy because it tells us everything that we need to do. But what's nice about recipes, especially these recipes, is that they're really flexible. So it gives you a good guide you don't have to stick to the recipe exactly. So there's lots of room to wiggle within that. All right, so I've got my ingredients out. So I have cream cheese, I have low fat cream cheese here. I've got my fresh fruit, I have blueberries, I have raspberries, and I have some very beautifully cut kiwi. I have my six slices of whole wheat bread over here. I have my non-fat milk here. I have my honey and I have my vanilla. And then I also have my equipment, all the things I'm gonna use. So I've got a cutting board. I've got a knife, because so I'm gonna cut the bread. I've got a bowl to keep all my utensils in there. I've got a spatula for mixing. I have one quarter teaspoon and I have one tablespoon. And then I also got out, just to show you all, I got this knife, I'll get a little closer so you can see it. I got this knife actually at Walmart, but I've seen it lots of different places. It's a nice uh, serrated, not sharp knife for kids that are learning how to cook. Obviously, the age range for this will vary. I'll leave, leave that up to the adult in the room to decide who's appropriate to use this. But it, it's not sharp, it won't cut you, um, but it's really nice to cut soft things like bananas or bread, um, and so the kids can practice. So with our recipe, the first thing that we've done already, because it had a little, if you read the recipe, it had a little pre thing to do. So the first thing we want to do is to set our cream cheese out so it gets soft, so it's not really solid uh, and cold. If it is cold, that's okay. You might just have to do a little bit more mixing, which we love to mix, especially for those that are five and under, really good at mixing. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna toast our bread. So the first thing we're gonna do before we toast it, let me take my bread, and I've stacked three pieces on top of each other, but you can do just one at a time, is we're gonna remove the crust from the bread. Because we're making little fruit charts, we want them to be nice, cute little squares. So we're cutting the crust off of the bread. So just cutting each side just right above the crust so that we have these nice, perfect little squares. I'm going to save my crust because I'm going to make breadcrumbs later to put onto salads or to use next week when we make mac and cheese. These breadcrumbs will be really delicious on top of the mac and cheese next week. 
All right, so I've got three. I'm gonna cut my other three. Save my crust, and then I've got nice square pieces here. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna smush them down a little bit so that they turn into nice little uh, toasts when we toast them. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. If you have a rolling pin, you can take the rolling pin out and you can roll on top of the bread so that it gets nice and thin. Uh, what I'm gonna do and what the recipe says to do is to put a heavy pan on top and smush them down. All of these things are very fun. So I've got my pan. I just put a piece of parchment paper down in between the pan and the bread just to keep my bread nice and clean. And I'm gonna put my pan on top and then I'm just gonna smush it down on all sides. So I have nice little flat pieces of bread. And I'm gonna smush mine down a little bit more. That didn't get it. So here's the third way you can smush it down. It's just smush it down with your hands. Okay, so now I've got three smushed pieces of square bread. So the recipe tells us that we can bake our, our put our bread in the oven to make them into little toast, or you could put them in a toaster to turn them into toast, or you can put them in a toaster oven. Um, I don't want to turn the oven on because it's summer in Tucson. We don't like to turn the oven on in summer in Tucson. So I'm going to use a skillet like this, and I'm going to put it on the stove. The stove top is already on, so here's where you need some adults to help. And I'm going to put my bread in there. And it won't take very long, so I've been preheating that. So I'm going to let those sit in there, and in the meantime, I'm going to smush my second pieces of bread. Smush them down, smush them down. So I've got nice thin pieces of square bread. And I'll put those in my skillet as well. All right, so it should only take a couple minutes. I've got a spatula and I'm just gonna turn my bread over. See how toasted we got? Just a little bit toasted. If it's in the oven, you're gonna do it for about 10 minutes to get them nice and crispy. On a skillet, it might take a little bit less. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna clean my station a little bit. So I'm just gonna get all my crumbs out of the way. And then we're set. And I'm gonna get ready for my next part of my recipe. So I'm gonna get my bowl ready, and I'm gonna get my fruit ready, and I'm gonna get my cream cheese, and my milk, and the honey, and the vanilla. So that's what we're gonna move on to next. All right, we're getting a little bit crispier over here. So what we're looking for, I don't know if you can see this, I've got a nice piece of toast here. So it's a little bit brown on both sides and it's crispy, it's crunchy. I can hear it sort of make a noise when I put my hands on it. Okay, we have some done ones on my side, so you might have some done ones on your side as well. All right, so you can move your toast over. I'm going to turn my stove off because I'm done with that. And then I've got a nice little set up here for all of my toast points. All right. 
So we'll let those cool. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is make our topping for the fruit tart. So we've got the base, the bottom of the fruit tart ready, and now we're going to make a yogurt dip or a cream cheese dip to put on top of the toast. All right. So we've got our cream cheese. I bought this uh, cream cheese, and it's an eight ounce container. We only need four ounces for our snack in the recipe. So I just sort of put half of it in there, and I'll leave half of it in the container for later. So we've got my cream cheese in the bowl. I'm gonna mix that with one and a half tablespoons of milk. And here's another point where we have flexibility in our recipe because I don't have a one half tablespoon. So I'm just gonna guess on my second pour there. I think I got pretty close. We're gonna add two tablespoons of honey next. So here's my honey. And I can use my same tablespoon. All right. And I can use my spatula to help get the honey out. Pro tip for honey, I, mean, I did not do this today, but what will help honey get out of your tablespoon or your measurement faster is to spray a little bit of cook cooking oil into your tablespoon. All right, the next thing we're gonna add is a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, here comes the fun part. We're going to mix. So I've got my cream cheese, I've got my milk, I've got my honey, and now we're gonna mix everything together. I find that a fork works better, and that's what the recipe said too. Whisking is fun, but it didn't seem to work as well as the fork. So we're just gonna smush my cream cheese into the milk and the honey. Mix it all up show you a close-up of what mine looks like because it's a little bit watery with the milk in there but I'm just going to keep mixing it and it turns into a nice sort of dip looks a little bit like frosting so we'll just keep working at it this is a great task for those in your kitchen that are five years old and under because there's not much that can go wrong with it, and it's just so fun to mix. So mine's looking pretty good. I made a batch of this earlier just to test it, and I noticed that my dip is a little bit chunky. I don't know if you can see that or not, and that's okay. It's not gonna be quite as smooth um, as we want it to, and that's okay. It's, it's gonna so this fruit dip, you may not use all of it today, and it can stay stored in your refrigerator for up to three days, and it's really good as a fruit dip with apples or pears or pineapple or melon, any of that. So once you've got it mixed up pretty good, I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm gonna get my toast ready. So we're gonna smear our cream cheese dip onto our toast. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my spatula and I'm just gonna smear it right on there. You can put as little or as much as you like, but remember we've got, we've got six pieces here. So we want to make sure we've got enough for each of the pieces. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less. And next is another fun part, we get to decorate. We get to decorate our, our fruit tarts. So I have blueberries, I have raspberries, and I have kiwi. So now we can top our fruit tarts with whatever fruit that we want. So I think I'm gonna put some blueberries. I'm gonna make a little smiley face. I'm gonna do a couple eyes. 
and I'll do a nose, a raspberry nose, and I'll do a kiwi smile. So parents in the room, I know we had a class earlier and we had a little one that did not, does not like cream cheese. Doesn't like any cheese, actually. And that is okay. So there's a couple ways you can handle that. So you can always adapt the recipe. So Greek yogurt would also work. Regular yogurt would also work. Lots of things you can do to change that up. Another thing you can do is let them play with their food. So what we're doing right now, I've just decorated uh, with the food. And I'm having fun, getting my hands dirty. Those are all really great ways for kids to engage with the food, whether they want to eat it or not. So we don't want to force any of the kiddos to eat anything because it just teaches them uh, actually to not like it and to not want to eat it. What we want to do is just be a little bit more relaxed with it, let them play with it, let them warm up to the food. So their timeline, let them be on their own timeline with that and don't push them to eat anything because it turns into a negative experience for them. Want it, we want it to be positive. All right, so I'm gonna show you mine. I made little decorations. There's my smiley face. Oh, it's upside down. All right, so for everybody, just some tips um, for fruits and vegetables and, and for having uh, fruits and vegetables in your house all year long. So what we used today was uh, fresh uh, fruit. Uh, because it's summer, there's lots of things in season. Fresh fruit is really uh, affordable. Uh, it's on sale. But in the winter months, uh, there's less fruit available. Uh, it can be really expensive. Um, and so just a reminder that frozen fruits and vegetables work really, really well. So yogurt is a really good way to mix in the frozen fruit. Uh, if you, you can pull out the fruit that you want to use the night before and let it thaw in the refrigerator and it will have some liquid at the bottom of it. You can drain the liquid off um, and then you can mix that frozen fruit in with your yogurt. Uh, the fruit tarts also would be really good with the frozen fruit. Again, you can just set it out the night before, you can thaw it um, and you can use any fruit that you would like. And that's a really good way uh, to use that frozen fruit and have fruit in your household all year long. Um, another good way to use that is smoothies. So one suggestion uh, that Cookie Matters has that I think is pretty good, I do this in my household, is to cut everything up ahead of time. So if I bought carrots or peppers or um, things to snack on for the week, or even apples to eat with my leftover fruit dip, uh, I just cut those things up ahead of time and I put them in little bags in my refrigerator so that they are ready to go. They stay pretty fresh. I use, usually use them within two to three days. Um, and I don't have to get out my cutting board and my knife and cut everything up um, in the middle of the week when I might be a little bit more busy. Another good reminder is, um, that Cookie Matters has is to not peel your vegetables. So a lot of times we get the vegetable peeler out and we want to peel our carrots. Um, and, uh, and our potatoes and that kind of thing. But the peel actually has a lot of nutrients in there. So we wanna leave our peel on. And they, at Cookie Matters, they just teach us just to wash everything really well and just eat it as it is um, and not peeling it. So that sort of, that can save us a step. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you uh, with our leftovers is I like using all of my food. So we have our crust from our bread our fruit tarts. So I was just going to make some breadcrumbs with it really quickly. So I'm going to turn my stove top back on. I'm going to pour out my breadcrumbs. And this is something that will work with our kids safe knife. So kiddos can do this. You can give them a couple slices, pieces of the crust. If you've got a toaster oven, or if your oven's on, you can also make croutons out of these. That, that's a good way to do it. So what I'm going to do, once I get all of this cut into little pieces, is I'm going to put it back in my skillet and I'm going to toast it all so that I can use those breadcrumbs next week. And I'm going to save them in a little container and I'm going to use them next week for our mac and cheese. I 
those poured in there and I'll let them get nice and toasty. And I'll make sure to mix them a lot so they don't get burned. And that should take just about five minutes for them to get really crispy like that. And then they'll be good to use. All right, so that concludes my Cooking Matters class. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.